guys. So I'm starting a history page to talk to you guys about local history. We're going to start with some of the early facts about Adair County. You guys don't even realize there's so many neat things right here where we live. And there's so much history right here where we live. And I think history is so important to know because history really does repeat itself. And if we look back at it and study it, maybe we can keep from making the same mistakes over and over again. So that being said, the first person we're going to talk about who was very influential in our area for just a short amount of time was Chief Going Snake. Now, I don't know if you guys realize it or not, but Going Snake actually used to be what Ader County is. Um, it was the northern part of Ader County. I'm looking at my notes because I'm never going to remember all this off the top of my head. It was part of eastern Cherokee County and even a portion of southern Delaware. So right here where we live actually used to be called Going Snake. And when my family first moved here um, about 150 years ago, it was still called that. It was called Going Snake District Indian Territory. So I've always heard it called Going Snake a lot growing up because my great grandpa, I was fortunate he he was alive when I was still a teenager. So I got to hear a lot of his stories and I'm very fortunate. So if you get a chance, talk to the older people in your family, listen to their stories. They have a lot of history. So Chief Going Snake, he was born in 1758 in Nottily Lake, Georgia, and hope I'm saying that right. He died March 1840 in Watts. He was around 81 years old. So I thought this was really neat. They buried him near his cabin that he had built. Um, and it's the grave is now on private property. So the cabin was somewhere near Ward Creek. And I'm not sure where that's at. I have not been able to find it. So it may be that that's what it used to be called. And now it goes by something different. But if you look on the book in my classroom, there's a link to find a grave. And you can see what his grave looks like. And it gives... Um, the name of the people who had the property and I've tried looking it up and I'm not even sure where it's at. So his, he's still buried on private property. Another neat thing I found out his birthday on his headstone could maybe be one of the oldest readable legible or where you can still read it birthdays on a tombstone in Oklahoma. Like it's a pretty old birthday, 1758 that you can still make out and read on the tombstone. So, but that's not a proven fact. That's just something people kind of speculate. So Going Snake, he served as a chief in Going Snake Town. I think that was probably near Polk County, Tennessee. It didn't say exactly where it was. In 1827, he was elected as Speaker of the National Council, and he served under Chief John Ross. Him and John Ross were actually really close. He was called John Ross's right-hand man. If you ever get a chance to go to Park Hill at Tahlequah, you can see John Ross's old house. And it's really cool. You can see where Stan Wadey tried to break into the house and left hatchet marks on the door still. And you can see the old slave quarters that are there. Um, I'll talk more about Stan Wadey later, but I thought it was pretty neat. So I, this is the part I found interesting. He also fought, Chief Walking Stick did, with Andrew Jackson, who was just a major general then, in 1814, in what was called the Battle of Horseshoe Bend. So the Battle of Horseshoe Bend is where the white settlers finally defeated, the army finally defeated the Red Sticks, which were part of the Creek Nation tribe. And they were really opposed to the settlers coming in and trying to live there because they could see it was not going to end well for them. Now, all throughout history, like I said, history repeats itself. So the Creeks were absolutely right. It didn't end very well. Just like it didn't end well for Greece when Rome took them over, or it didn't end well for northern China when Genghis Khan was invading. So, you know, all through history, there's been one group of people who have invaded another, and it's never ended well. And it didn't end well for the Creeks. So I thought it was so interesting. Chief um, Going Snake actually joined Andrew Jackson and helped fight against the Creeks. 
And that was called the Battle of Horseshoe Bend. So here's what was really a bum move. I thought this was awful. 16 years later, that Major General Andrew Jackson, as I'm sure you guys know, became our, you know, was our president. 16 years later, he signed the Indian Removal Act, which forced relocation of about 60,000 Native Americans from their homes. So think about it. Imagine, you know, some of those people, that was generational land. They had lived there for a long time. Their families had lived there for a long time. Think about if your family has land that they've had for a while. Think about if another group of people who were different than you came in and took that land from you and told you all you could carry were the clothes on your back and you had to get out because it was no longer yours. Could you imagine how that would make you feel? It was awful. So they forced them out. About 4,000 died on what was later known as the Trail of Tears. Um, so after they forced them out, they started organizing how to move them here to what was, you know, then Indian Territory. Now we know it is Oklahoma. So they were trying to figure out how to get them here. The first try at it did not go very well. It was, it was bad and people died. So the removal took not only Cherokee, but it took the Creek, the very same Creeks who were part of them were fighting against the white people being there and the, and the Cherokee fought against them and said, no, it's okay. Well, they got moved out the same as the Cherokee did the Creek, the Cherokee, the Seminole, the Chalk, the Chickasaw and the Choctaw nations, as well as some African slaves that they had, all got moved out. So the guy that headed that up was named General Winfield Scott, and he began removing them. And like I said, it wasn't going well. So a bunch of the leaders, like Chief Going Snake, petitioned to be allowed to lead their own people out and to take better care of them. And he was allowed to do that. So let me read to you what it said. I thought this was so good. So he left in September. Um, the day was September 28th in 1838. He was 80 years old. 80 years. Can you guys imagine? So at the time, a nephew of Chief John Ross witnessed the removals. His name was William Shorey Cootie. He was a Cherokee, and he witnessed them getting ready to leave. And this is what he said about Going Snake. He said, at length, the word was given to move on. I glanced along the line in the form of Going Snake, an aged and respected chief whose head 80 summers had whitened, mounted his favorite pony, passed before me, and led the way in silence. At this very moment, a low sound of distant thunder fell upon my ears. The sun was unclouded and no rain fell. I almost thought it was a voice of divine indignation for the wrongs done my poor and unhappy countrymen, driven by brutal power from all they loved and cherished in the lands of their fathers to gratify the cravings of avarice. So that it was, it was not good. It was a sobering sight to see that old chief, Chief Going Snake, step up and lead his people out of the lands that they had lived on for generations to go to a whole new place and start over. He was 80 years old, 80. Think about people in your family who are 80 having to do that. So it took him four months to get here, what we now know as Adair County, but back then it was just Indian territory to them. Um, when he got here, it wasn't real organized on how the people were taken care of when they got here. So I think for a little bit, they kind of had to fend for themselves. So he built a cabin on Ward Branch Creek, which again, I haven't been able to figure out exactly where that is. I know it's about six miles north of Westville. Um, I think it's probably around Watts somewhere. I just I haven't been able to figure out exactly where. And that's where he built his cabin. So the last recorded political service that mentions Chief Going Snake was in Tahlequah on July 12th, 1839, when he was 81 years old. And he stepped in 
as Speaker in the General Convention between the Eastern and the Western Cherokees. So he was sort of one of the ones who was helping to broker peace between the Eastern and the Western Cherokees. And he stepped down shortly thereafter. And he died, like I said, he died. Let me make sure I get this date right. Because I don't want to scout it off without making sure it's right. He died in 1840. So he died just a year later. Um, he was about, they said, 81, 82 when he died. So that was the last act of service he did for his people, the Cherokee people. Um, they have honored Chief Going Snake by, of course, naming a big chunk of our area after Going Snake. And they also, um, let's see, what else did they name after him? I'm double checking. Okay, so they named a street in Tahlequah, which we know is the chap capital of Cherokee Nation, after him. So if you're ever in Tahlequah, look for that. His tombstone says, Chief Going Snake, famous Cherokee orator born 1758. So I would love, love to be able to go out and actually visit his grave. I read an article where um, a journalist got to go out and see it and wrote an article for a newspaper. I don't remember which newspaper it was now. I kind of just saw it flipping through some stuff, but they let him go out and look and I think that would be so neat. But find a grave is almost just as good. It has a picture of it if you find it in the book and it tells a little more about his life. Maybe some things I missed. I also have a link to Wikipedia, so you could read it for yourself. And I have a map on the wall of what the original Going Snake District looked like. And also a history of Ader County and kind of how it got its name. And inside the window is the Baptist Mission Church. So if you'll click on that, I'll have a little short video also on the Baptist Church and the part that it played with the Cherokee removal to our area and kind of how it helped look out for its people and it was really interesting so i hope you guys enjoy it you can do some of your own research and read some of your own books there's some really neat stuff out there just right here where we live which a lot of people don't know about so enjoy and i will see you later